Uh, hi, I'm uh, Keegan. I'm uh, the guitar player in Destroyer of Light. Or one of the guitar players in Destroyer of Light. <laughs> the guitar player. The only one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Steve Kolka. I'm the guitar player and vocalist of the band. Why, why did, well, we, we wanted to come back to the West Coast. Um, we've been here a couple times. And uh, it's kind of tough to do uh, touring wise um, just because the, the distance is so long between a lot of your stops. And, uh, you know, we always kind of want to make it up to Seattle and the Northwest, but it's kind of hard finding, um, it's pretty much one way in, one way out, you know, because if you head into like the Midwest, it gets really rough really quick. So getting out here from Texas is tough. So we try to make it here like once every year or two, and we hadn't made it for a couple years, um, or it had been like two years, I think, since the last yeah, time we were here. Last time we were here, he couldn't go with us. So me and our old bass player played guitar and provided low end on the bass. So he didn't even get to go to our last West Coast tour. So. Right, which which was in 2016, I want to say, too. So it was, it was a while. So Penny, um, he had a fall uh, at our friend's house walking up the steps in Denver and uh, fractured his hip um, and so he had to go to the ER and uh, we didn't really know what was going to happen at that point we were just kind of focused on making sure he was okay and seeing what the problem was they did an x-ray and they told us he was going to have to have surgery um, but luckily we were in a spot where we had a lot of um, friends who were there to support us and help us and uh, fans back home and all over uh, really supported us with the GoFundMe to do uh, take care of travel expenses to send Penny home and to fly in a new drummer um, to finish out the tour um, and we were able to make that happen we met up with Daniel in Portland and uh, here we are <laughs> third date with uh, Daniel on drums so we'll be able to finish the dates and Penny's at home recovering yeah, we're really fortunate to have people like Sarah Morgan in Denver that helped us take care of things. And then all, when we put that GoFundMe together, so many people, we weren't asking for too much. I mean, 600 is a lot, but we even made more than 600. Yeah, it was, so it was, they took care of everything. His yeah. mom flew up, was able to fly up to be with him um, and uh, fly back. So, yeah, took care of everything. Yeah. Uh, he brought it up and, uh, I mean... I was down. I was like, we can go back home or not. And when he said, let's do it, I was like, okay, let's, if we're going to do it, let's make it happen. Right, you either make it happen or you don't. And well, because that's the thing, it's like, there's been tours that I haven't gone on, there's been two of them, and we've had, you know, we have our third bass player now, Nick. Um, we've had different people do merch and lighting for us. Um, so we've always like made it happen no matter what and but penny's always been there so that's been really tough because he he kind of keeps us on the straight and narrow like he's our backbone us into shape yeah. like um so not having he's he's always been there as a constant you in you as well yeah me and him have um, never missed anything for the band and i mean obviously things happen and I know he would want us to continue if we could make it happen, but he would he'd want us to make sure that we did it right and not screw it up. So we're, right. trying, <laughs> we're trying to do it right, you know? Like we're stepping up and all of us are filling in for the roles that he does in the band. And right. we're taking responsibility in that, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we, he, he, he's, he's the guy who, if there's a situation, will just be like, Let's fucking do it. Like, what are, what are we waiting around for? Yeah. Um, I mean, I we get called, our style of music gets called doom rock, doom metal, sludge. Um, stoner metal. Stoner metal. Any combination. Any combination of that. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, man, like, it's just, you know, really loud, heavy guitar riffs with melodic vocals is how I'd say. Yeah. Br brutal, or uh, heavy and melodic are the two key stone elements that we like to write our music as. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know, we all listen to a lot of different 
kind of styles of music, and we all grew up listening to classic rock and, um, you know, um, all sorts of, you know, my records in my parents' record collection. Um, and so we'd never, we've always had like a doomed core to the band as the focus, but we draw from anything. Um, you know, the first band I was in was, we were playing Slayer style riffs. Yeah. You were doing death metal stuff yeah, in, Michigan. Death metal in Michigan. Um, you know, so we, yeah, we've all been involved in all kinds of different projects. So uh, we like to just not not put those limitations there. Yeah, I think the one key ingredient of our band is that we don't want to limit ourselves to one style. If the song requires it, we'll make it work. We don't need to be pigeonholed in one genre. So. Yeah, I mean, like when I'm writing a song, I don't even think about it. I don't either. Right. Of I like think it's what, a how good riff it? and a good melody. Right. That's yeah. basically what makes it. So. Yeah, I definitely, I, I, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm a self-taught guitarist, so I think like a lot of, people who taught themselves to play and had an interest in metal. I had, you know, all the phases of like just playing Metallica songs in my room. Um, you know, went through a lot of phases as a guitarist of trying to sound like other people. And then at a certain point you start trying to find your voice. And like, yeah, I look back on my earlier bands of like, it was kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. And I guess that's still what I've ended up doing, but we just do it in a way that's like a little bit more uh, with a consistent theme is what I've really honed in. But um, yeah, I, I, my main difference I would say is like I stopped trying to be a really technical guitar player. I, like I was trying really hard to be like, oh, well, if this guy I really like can play that, I need to be able to do that. And eventually kind of realized like I've got my own style that I've, that's just naturally developed from learning to play guitar myself, so I'm just gonna go with that. Um, and I get told a lot that I don't necessarily like oh yeah you play that one riff kind of weird so you know that's cool I think it was a compliment yeah I started in my first band at 15 and at the time we were kind of like a mix of Tool, Helmet and uh, Deftones because that's what I listened to at the time and I mean I still listen to Tool and Helmet and Deftones actually but my taste and what I've played has changed since then and for me like he said it's not about being technically good. For me, writing a good song is way better than being a really good guitar player. The shredder. Yeah, yeah. shredder. And like, I'd say, because I did that band, and then when I really matured more was when I started a, I started a stoner metal band, kind of like High on Fire. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a few years called Poor Bastard Revolt. And that kind of like helped me create kind of more of what style I was as a guitar player. Because me, it's always about, back then and still now, it's always been about the riff. And I want to write killer riffs. But like ever since I've become a melodic vocalist, I also want to think about now you melodies. get that, it's another level to it. Yeah, it's like, another thing. There's some like riffs I've written, like thinking about what you're gonna sing that like would be a boring riff. There, when you really get into that level of it, like. That's another thing that I, I definitely changed about um, as a musician is like when you first start bands and you're like, ah, whoever can sing, it doesn't matter. And like, you just kind of do it. Um, but like, if you really focus on that, what your melody is going to be and you can write riffs around it. Exactly. And like what might normally be like a more boring riff or more stock riff, if you put a cool vocal melody on it, can sound really different. A lot of bands do that. If you took the vocals out and you listen to it, you're like, right. this is really boring. But yeah. the, vocal, the vocal approach makes it powerful, you know? Yeah, have you seen that video of the four chord song, the British comedians on YouTube? Oh, yeah. Where they, they, they go and they play through like every, like not every, but like hundreds of, or dozens of hits basically from like 20, 30 years. And it's all the same four chord progression. But they all, like, you recognize all the songs and they have, like, a different, unique melody to them. So, you know. That's what gives it the character. Yeah, there's only so many tricks in the bag, really. <laughs> you, gotta <work laughs> yeah. with, you gotta work with them, yeah. and, you know. Right.